Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about simplifying imaginary numbers. It's actually one of my favorite lessons to do, so I'm really excited to do this one today. An imaginary number is represented with the letter i, and we can have i to different powers, which would then translate to mean different things. So today we're going to first break down what i to the different powers means, uh, and then we're going to look at how could you break down like a really large power of i, like what's a cool trick to do that. Our first kind of foundational knowledge is to know that when we see that letter i, what it's really saying is, or what it represents, is the square root of negative 1. We can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real answer. Instead, we get an imaginary answer, which we represent with the letter i. Whenever you see just an i to the first power, just a plain i, you know that really means square root of negative 1. i, which is equal to the square root of negative 1, is really just i. And that's a, the symbol that we use to represent it. When we have an i squared, think about what a squared means. So when you have something squared, that means itself timesing by itself twice. So if i is the square root of negative 1, then i squared is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. When we do this, and this is kind of a cool a cool thing to show you, if I were to just type that in, because some of you might be thinking, oh, maybe I could just type that into the calculator. So if you do just type it into the calculator, I'll show you what would happen. So you'd have uh, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. And it's going to tell you error, non-real answer. And the reason it's going to say that is because we get an imaginary number. And your calculator is like, eh, I can't take the square root of a negative number, so try again. So we can't do that. But to show you what actually is happening here, I'm going to use, instead of using square root of a negative number, I'm just going to use a regular number. So I'm going to use like 5. Okay, so square root of 5 times square root of 5. And our answer is... 5. So what does that tell us? That tells us that when we multiply the square root of a number by the square root of a number, you're just left with that number. And it's not just 5, right? You could try anything. We could do square root of 10 times square root of 10, and we get 10. So what that tells us is when I take the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, I get negative 1. So what that tells me is i squared is just negative 1, okay? So when we reduce i squared, we get a negative 1. When we look at this third one, so now we've got i to the third power, or i cubed is how we would say it. So that time, we're multiplying i three times, right? Which would look like square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1. So now we're just kind of reducing at this point, and we're saying, all right, well, Based on the rule that we did here, we can now apply that to those first two square roots of negative 1. So we can say the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is just negative 1. But we still have this square root of negative 1 over here, so what do we do with that? Well, um, remember, square root of negative 1 is just a way of saying i, right? So we could just rewrite that single square root of negative 1 as i. So this is like negative 1 times i. And let's reduce that. What is negative 1 times i? Well, we would just be left with negative i. So if we were to simplify i cubed, we'd get negative i. So let's apply that same reasoning to i to the fourth power. So in this case, I've got square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1, right? Four different times. So let's reduce what we can. Well, again, based on that rule that we found here, that the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is just negative 1, we can apply that to the first two, right? So square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is negative 1. And then look, we have another pair. Square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is just negative 1. 
So then we want to reduce again. What is negative 1 times negative 1? Well, we know that's just 1. So if we were to reduce i to the fourth power, it would just be positive 1. Okay, so what about i to the fifth power? So now it's getting kind of crazy. We have square root of negative 1 times itself five times. Like this is, this is getting to be a lot, right? But I'm going to show you something, and I'm specifically wanting to show you i to the fifth because I want you to see what happens. So when I do i to the fifth power, let's use those same rules we were using on the other one. So square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1, well, that's just negative 1. Right? And same thing for this second pair too, just like we did here with the four. Square root of negative one times square root of negative one is negative one, right? And then we just have this square root of negative one hanging out here. But remember, that's just another way of saying i. So now we've got this times i. So let's reduce again. We've got negative one times negative one times i. Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And positive 1 times i is just i. If I were to reduce i to the fifth, I'd get just a single i, i to the first power, which hopefully you'll notice is the same thing as right there, right? So what we what happens is it creates a pattern. So we found out that i reduced is just i, right? i is just i. i squared is negative 1. i cubed, we found out, is negative i. And i to the fourth power was positive 1. Then we found out i to the fifth was just i, right? And what happens is this pattern repeat starting with i. So this i is just brought down. This negative 1 is just brought down. So i to the 6th is negative 1. And then right here, this negative i is brought down. i to the 7th is negative i. And then this positive 1 is brought down. So i to the 8th would just be 1. So this pattern of i, negative 1, negative i, 1 i, negative 1, negative i, 1. It just keeps repeating. And it doesn't stop at 8, right? It just keeps going on, etc. Okay? Now, that can be, if, if your numbers are pretty low, you might be able to just repeat that pattern until you get the one you want. And it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But then, what about when they give you something huge? Like looking at these examples, okay? Like i to the 103 power. Like, would you have to repeat this? 103 times until you get to your answer? No, of course not. That would take you forever, right? So I'm going to show you a really cool trick to quickly simplify very large powers of i. So to show you this trick, I'm going to take a little bit of a detour for a second, just over here on the side. Let's just use some basic common knowledge, okay? If I were talking about money and I had, I said that I had point Two, five, right? If I had 25 cents, how many quarters is that? And hopefully you're thinking, uh, well, that'd be one quarter, right? So that would be, so 25 cents would just be one quarter. Okay, what if I had 0.50? So if we had 0 0.50, that would be 50 cents. And then how many quarters would be in 50 cents? Well, that would be two quarters. What if I had 0.75? 75 cents. How many quarters would we have then? Well, hopefully you know that that would be three quarters. And if we had 0.00, okay, so we're going to assume we're saying like we have a dollar, right? We're going to pretend that there's a whole number one out there. If we had 0.00, that would be like having a dollar, which would be like having four quarters. We're going to use this knowledge to help us quickly simplify these imaginary numbers. Here's how it works. When you have your i to the 52nd power, what you're going to do is take your power and we're going to divide it by four. We're dividing it by four quarters. 
So 52 divided by 4. So let's grab out our calculator and let's see what is 52 divided by 4. So 52 divided by 4. And we get 13. We get a whole number 13, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to write that as 13 point oh oh we want to see that point oh oh we don't actually care about the number 13 at all i only care about the point oh oh so let's think back to what we said here point oh oh would be like having four quarters right so this is like having four quarters the trick is we then say well this i to the 52nd power can be reduced to i to the fourth power and if you have your one two three four powers memorized which are really the only ones you need to memorize um, we don't need to memorize five i just wanted to show you that the pattern starts over once you have these memorized you know i to the fourth power is just one so i to the 52nd power can be reduced to a positive one Let's try another one. For this one, we have i to the power of 103. So let's use that rule again, that little trick. So we're gonna take 103, we're gonna divide it by four and see what we get. So we've got 103 divided by four and we get 25.75. Okay, so let's write that. So 25.75, again, the whole number, we don't care about it all. We only care about how many quarters do we have. So in this case, we would have 75 cents is three quarters. And three quarters would be like saying i to the third. And we know i to the third power or i cubed is negative i. So if we wanted to quickly reduce i to the power of 103, it would just be negative i. All right, let's try another one. i to the 57th power. So let's take our 57, divide it by four, and see what we get. So 57 divided by four, we get 14.25. So again, 14.25. We don't care about the whole number at all. How many quarters would 25 cents be? Well, that's just one quarter. And for one quarter, that's just I. And you could either write just plain I or you could write I to the first, it doesn't matter. They say the same thing. And I to the first power is just I. All right, let's do one more together. So I to the 42nd power, let's see what that would reduce to. So 42 divided by four. We get 10.5. And you might be thinking 10.5, that's not one of our options, right? 10.5 is the exact same thing as saying 10.5. Oh, right, those say the exact same thing. So we don't care about the 10, we only care about the cents. So 50 cents is really two quarters, right? And so with that point, we've got an I squared for two quarters. And I squared, whether you have it memorized or you wanna write it out and solve it, it's just a negative one. So here's a few for you guys to try. So we've got I to the 33rd power, I to the 15th power, and I to the 64th power. You guys try those on your own. I'll post the answers in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.